That's I used what to, I'm talking about. That's the yeah. stuff I need. There you I go. used to get I used to get some yeah. of uh, his bread down there. Like I had a uh, what is it? Like I had a little CCA with uh, Cure Farms a couple years ago mm-hmm. pre COVID, and he had his stand out there, and all of his bread is super good. Like the rye, yeah, both loved it. And my but, wife loves the, the pretzel rolls. Ooh, which, those things are yeah. sneaky fucking good. Yeah, yeah. and they're only like a buck. I would always yeah. grab a few of those to take with me. Yeah. Nice. Um, who who else is uh but he he's strictly like cottage yeah. style, yeah. Yeah. So and I think he does Call to Arms brewery. I think he does oh, pop ups. Yeah, up they there. do like little yeah. pickups there and all that shit. Yeah. That's a great fucking brewery. I haven't been there in a while. Um, Are you excited about Tennyson Street? Like, yes. I mean, it seems to be fucking piping over there. We do for First Friday on occasion where Berkeley Untapped has the live concert yeah. series in the park. I mean, it seems so vibrant over there. Yeah, it's wild. And it's just going to keep growing. And, and um, there's a new apartment building that's about to be finished that's going to have retail and restaurant space, too. So it's just going to. And there's a couple of new developments that are going. Green Door Furniture, I'm sure, is going to get repurposed some way, somehow. Um, that's so. I want to know what's going to get because I mean obviously that's a prime real estate. You're right across from the park. Yeah. You're across from a nightly pretty much Airbnb in that whatever twelve plex that shit is. That what is that hotel called? The one where it has the balconies in the front and back. I don't know. It's like a Airbnb building or whatever it is. That Asher is that, is that what it is? is? The one that's f- it's further down. Or yeah, not? it's not necessarily directly. Yeah, yeah. But whatever it is, that area is piping. And then the South Broadway, I mean, it's impossible to get a tea time because it's so popular. It's a great atmosphere. What is it missing? Bread, pastries. <laughs> yeah, <not to> say, <laughs> besides right? bread and pastries, what would you like to see join you on the street? I would like to see. I mean, I'm a big fan of grab and go places, and I feel like like a, like a quick market kind of. Guy. Yeah, I feel like West Highlands, Tennyson, and even Highlands, they just there aren't enough places where you can just like, if you're just walking down the street, you could be like, I'm fucking hungry, and I just want to grab something and and walk and eat and like. Is that an enjoy the thing? shops? Yeah, I think so. You're thinking of like a bodega type place that maybe serves sandwiches and shit like that. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. 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 Just like a good spot where it's not super expensive. There doesn't have to be anything gourmet about it, but it could just be a place to grab something quick and just walk around while you hit up. Because there's like how many boutiques on in Highland Square and on Tennyson. Yeah. And they just kind of it's so walkable that you just kind of need something like that. If you were asked tomorrow, would you vote to legalize open consumption outside of the restaurants? And oh, yeah. Places 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. You need to start asking hard-hitting questions. On any local What's your stance on 2A? No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there anything, before we get into these last couple questions, is there anything you want anyone to know about this new spot that we didn't cover? Um, it's going to be more than just a bakery. That's I know that. Um, we're going to have sandwiches, we're going to have salads, we're going to do chef showcases and stuff like that, um, yeah. which is something that I'm really excited about. So um, if there, anybody who's out there who's listening to this, if you are a chef or a dishwasher, anybody who wants to do anything with food, um, send me a message and we can try to figure out a way to set something up. But basically, nobody's going to have to pay for anything. We'll cover all the costs, we'll sell tickets, and we just split whatever we make. Yeah, we're not going anywhere. We're talking right now about this right here. Yeah. So I apologize. I mean, again, I, I blame the marijuana <laughs> usage. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about these yeah. concepts. So are we going to go through lunch? You're talking about salads and sandwiches. Yeah. Are we making these on homemade sourdoughs? Oh, what yeah. Ta- and yeah. then River Bear meats? Yeah, absolutely. Tell us um, a little bit about this. So we'll go – we'll definitely have breakfast sandwiches because um, we do brioche. Um, we do biscuits, like I mentioned before. Um, we do bagels, which have been a huge hit. Um, New York style bagels. Goddamn Yankees. Yeah, I know. They can't get rid of us. <laughs> Love uh, bagels. <laughs> um, and then obviously we're doing our croissants and our pastries and things like that. But uh, you'll be able to come in and get breakfast sandwiches, and then throughout lunch we'll have lunch sandwiches. We'll do grilled cheeses, um, all sorts of cool stuff. And then we'll have dinner pop-ups, whether it's burgers or some sort of sandwiches or actually like real dinner kind of stuff. Because we have so much seating, it doesn't make sense to just close at 2 and then be done for the day. Um, we got to find a way to kind of fill that vacant space throughout the week. We'll we'll do a stoned appetite team pop up dinner. Yeah, and there you also go. because it's a private location and you don't have a liquor license, do you? No, not yet. You know what that means? <laughs> it means you can do consumption. Right? 
Do you want to partner for a cannabis consumption party? Sure. Let's bring in our <laughs> friends Groovy Gravy. Um, S- Stephen Wolf knows all about that aspect. But we have a laundry list of chefs that I think you should reach out to. And we have a f- film crew that would love to do it. We could showcase local chefs. But yeah. I love this menu, the grilled cheese stonerisms. Yeah. And in winter, I know I'm in the 5 a.m. crew, probably baristas sit. I don't have any input on the menu. But a tomato soup, just to go. Oh, yeah. It. Yeah. And then maybe on one day throw a bisque in there, you know. Corn bisque. Oh, get That's out! Right. Yeah. <laughs> and with your connections in the D.C. area, maybe stir it up and make it crab corn a little yeah. bit. One, just seasonal, seasonal. Yeah. Think about it. I take requests for anybody who wants to. We talk about sliding into the DMs. Go ahead and do that. I mean, that's where a lot of stuff comes from, too. Like anybody who wants to see something come back onto the menu or whatever, because everything rotated. And I just give the people what they want. Really? Try to, at least. Man of the people. Yeah. So if we wanted just just once, <laughs> I just wanted a Texas style and Dewey or Boudin Kalachi. Can you make me one? I could try. Fuck it. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm glad we got into that. Th- Chris, that was a great question. And I apologize if I ruined the earlier <laughs> You're all good. All right, Chris, go ahead and give us the next. All right. So here, here's here's one. When you're, uh, you know, this is the stoned appetite munchy question. So you've had a long day or whatever. You get home late at night. You're starving. What are you reaching for? Freezer, pantry, fridge. What's your go-to guilty pleasure? Oh man, I so, like I said, I don't have a sweet tooth, so it's salty. No. I love I, frozen it? food, uh, pepperoni pizza, hot pockets. <laughs> Just How do you slam get those. Right. Hold no. on, pepperoni What's the pizza recipe? hot. You yeah. still eat hot? They still make those? Oh, they sure do. Yeah. How do you get them hot in the middle without ruining the outside? You just I don't We're know. I'm, I'm a baker. It's special. <laughs> it's a special yeah, what trick. Are you, what are you doing? Are you using some cottage like wizardry? Yeah. Yeah. You can't t- put it in the thing because it it doesn't get the center, and then I, if you put it over, it gets too hot. It's I'm it's a- a We're asking bitch. the guy that fucking bakes. You know what you need? How do you get a hot pocket hot in the middle? You know what you need is the those little domes that protect your microwave from splattering all over the place. A microwave. It like steams like, no, itself no, no, no. in the How thing. How do you get a hot pocket hot in the middle? That's what he was telling us. I'm trying yeah. to hear it. You need you need to buy one of the. You go to IKEA. They're like two dollars. They protect your microwave from spills and splatters, and uh, you get one of those, and it like creates a little steam chamber in there. That's it. That's what I do at least. So you sacrifice any form of crunch or texture to the outside in order to get the heat on the inside? You just got to microwave it a little bit longer than what you originally had planned to. So if it's two minutes, go 2.30. That's no cottage wizardry. <laughs> you asked me what the trick was. That's it. I, yeah. I, was, I wish this, I could have figured that out in sixth grade. Yeah, this shit's not revolution. It doesn't work. It's a buster answer. Mm-hmm. I can't believe you don't make your own hot pockets. I've tried. Yeah? It's just, I mean. It's like know, a cow's they, they figured it out. In the words of Leslie Nope, nobody likes them. They're not fun. <laughs> I'm with you on that one. So, but I guess uh, there's a follow-up question to that. Yeah. What, is there a second, do you like the ham and cheese hot pocket? Like, where do we draw the line on how bad your taste actually sucks? <sighs> The pepperoni pizza hot pocket is just where it's at. It's just I don't, I don't go for I don't go for any other Not ones. Not the meatball one. Yeah, no, no. With just the meatball I pellet? buy the the family pack. From just throw it in the freezer and just like just <laughs> knock them out as I see fit. How long does it take you to kill a Costco twenty pack? Or, or excuse me, whatever forty. <laughs> twenty days. <laughs> unless I'm, unless I'm Eating them in going twos. wild. Yeah. Uh, hold on, but if you if you were if you had hot pockets and pizza rolls in front of you at the same time, which which one are you going for? Are we talking like Totino's pizza yeah, rolls? Yeah. I'm going hot pocket. Still. Yeah. I got to. Hot pocket versus bagel bites. What are we going with? Ooh, that's. No, that's a question. <laughs> Both. So do you yes, the answer is yes. Yeah. Do you appreciate the bagel and the frozen bagel? <laughs> no. Because oftentimes we ask chefs, like, or, you know, we ask wine critics or cannabis folks, are you snobby when you go into other restaurants? Are you snobby when it comes to the frozen food section? No. Clearly no. not. So you don't no, think yeah. But hot you don't pockets. Think, but, yeah, but the bagel is so much better than the hot pocket. I'm just curious. 
where the fuck your line goes. I don't know. I think it, it could be a nostalgia thing, you know? It's just one of those things that I just gravitate towards. God, just such well, a thank God he's not nostalgic about lunch Lunchables or things like that. No, I mean, yeah, no, d- no well, I, I don't fuck with Lunchables, no. I don't, yeah, I'll <laughs> fuck with the yeah, Lunchables. Yeah, we know that. Yeah. Well, and, you know, charcuterie, six-year-old or up. <laughs> <I'll end it. laughs> with a little dipstick. Yeah, I'm not scared. You're thinking of something else. Oh, the cheese with the... He's not the brightest crayon in the box, but I love him dearly. <laughs> um, all right. Those were good, and I did eat those, too. Um, and the ones that spread across the cracker. And Dunkaroos. Shout out to our friends over at Dunkaroos. Um, I love Dunkaroos. I sent you a message about the Dunkaroos. I, know, I was like, holy dude, shit. Did you see those macarons <laughs> that were fucking made with them? No. Nah. Oh, um, wait. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, I know you're not a sweet guy. I'm not either. Well, let's fuck around, maybe play with We could do a little stoner eats. We make some creativity in the kitchen, see what flavors come out. Because that, that fun fetty or that Dunkaroo dip yeah. with the Greek yogurt, guys, that shit parties. Yeah. And I swear to God, if you threw it inside of two of your little baked things. Need little croissant bites that you can dip into the talk dirty, too. Yeah. I mean, that could be a perfect little only available for catering orders, $40 <laughs> or above. And you just charge people for grown-up Dunkaroos without the salmonella. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, all right, so before we leave that conversation, you have kind of tipped your hand that you maybe consume cannabis on a regular basis. What's your preferred method of getting high? Pre rolls. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just well, they're just easy. They're you convenient. love quick and easy. Yeah, that's right. Cause Which is the opposite of what my life generally is. So yeah, right. probably gravitate yeah, towards that. Weird. Seeing as he gets up like three <laughs> yeah. and bakes the same thing. Yeah, I just yeah. don't want to fucking think anymore. Just give me things. I used to um, dabble in or dabble a lot uh, in extracts, <laughs> yeah, and stuff like that. But it's just it's just too much. I I yeah, I like to be able to function for a little bit. Oh, dude, if I do a dab, I'm I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I'm done. And I enjoy getting high. I get high. Throughout most parts of the day. Is that true? Yeah. But the dab, it's still like one of those guys. I'm like, all right, well, it's a slippery slope. I'm done. I I like it. Um, Do you have a preferred spot that you like to shout out? Because I I think I could put you on a couple. I like to go to the joint, to be honest. Um, Yeah, because it's just just close to my house. Yeah, and they've got good stuff and good prices. Um, But I know you talk about Cali's, which is right. You know, talk about David again, but right across from Mercury. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And so those guys, it's a one-two punch you can't beat. Get a little, uh, get a little weed, get a little ice cream. Yeah, we got to pre-order your ice cream. <laughs> yeah, but they, like do, they, they do. The yeah. Saturday and Sundays, it's almost like your fucking bread. Yeah. And how hard it is to get. Yeah. But pre-ordering through Right Cream's website is definitely preferred. But you can still do pop-ups yeah. on a couple days a week. So shout out to David and Josh and the, the gang over there at Right Cream. Yeah. All right, last question of the night. Chris, you ready? Yeah. I got this. I think I got this. It's called The Last Supper. We ask every single old guest, 150 episodes deep, you get to have three people join you for your last evening of supper. What are the three folks, or who are the three folks? They can be dead or alive. They cannot be friends or family. Mm. What are we doing? Who's coming? Kendrick Lamar, 100%. Um, I got to go with Chad Robertson, who's the founder of Tartine, kind of like my idol. So I feel like he would have to be there. And, oh, shit. I feel like I need to go with an athlete for the third one. I'm going to go with J.J. Reddick because my bakery is Bakery 4. Wait, the fuck? Yeah, that's it. You named your bakery after J.J. Reddick? My favorite number is four. That's why it's Bakery 4, and my favorite number is 4 is because J.J. Reddick. I'm a big Duke basketball fan, and that's it. Sorry to anybody who's in North Carolina. Well, actually, I'm not sorry. I was a North, North Carolina fan. Shout out to our friend to B. Fair, <laughs> I mean, yeah, fuck Duke. I'm a North Carolina fan. Uh, grew up a big Anton and Vince uh, fan. Best rivalry in sports. Um, I, I couldn't disagree. I feel like ESPN kind of contaminated it by doing all the tobacco road kind of <laughs> conversations. But back in those early 2000s when those teams were just battling. Like, oh, yeah. I remember watching Boozer and Batty A in the Alaskan shootout in the midnight tournament they used to play out there and things like that. So 
I, I respect Duke and as Coach K does his 